exactly. Another predator could have eaten them up, he said. Yeah, so she's going to protect them from predators. So it makes sense that female birds of prey, who spend most of the time with the young uh, before they're out of the nest, have to protect them. Any questions over here? Barn owls sometimes hunt during the day, and you can hear them sometimes calling on cloudy days, particularly. So it's it's not too hard a bird to see sometimes in the winter on overcast days, or to see them sunbathing. You have a pretty good chance during the daytime to maybe see a barn owl. Yeah, they do tend to really prefer wetlands, but they also this barn owl, this barn owl, okay, named for the bars here. She's not quite done molting. She looks a little, a little better than the other one. <laughs> now, who would like to help me with a barn owl's call? How about this young lady right here? Okay, you can stand right to my right. Now, the barn owl really is the hooter in the family. They have an eight-note call that if you look up in a field guide, which a lot of you probably have. Any, any of you have a bird book? Doesn't have to be this one. We do. Okay, sure. If you can see, if you go to the owl section, look up Bard Owl, B A R R E D, you'll see that silly string of words that my mom taught me when I was six years old. She said, Marsha, when you hear your first Bard Owl, it's going to sound like it's saying, Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? And I thought she was cuckoo, you know, but she's a bird watcher. And uh, sure enough, that next spring, we went to Black Pond in Norwell on the South Shore where I grew up, and we heard, oh, 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 who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? So it's an eight note call. We birders tend to have silly strings of words to help us remember all the birds' calls. So it's eight notes. Oh, 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 oh. Parents are used for educational programs, 
and he just turned eight. We adopted him when he was four weeks old. And I'm going to have Mark pick a caller to do the call from their seat, okay? okay? Just because he he's so touchy. He's very, very, okay. In the Arctic, out on the tundra, and we've seen them. We've been to the Arctic seven times. They're out there on the little hummocks. You know, there aren't any trees in the Arctic. And they're letting each other know where their territories are by whoo, whoo. It's kind of a whooping sound that carries over the rolling tundra. Whoo, whoo. Go ahead. Whoo, whoo. Yeah. And then we have seen them here as well, of course, in New England. I remember one out on the Nantucket beach getting dive bombed by a peregrine falcon. Uh, and he just stood his ground and he went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kind of cackled, of course. It didn't sound like what, exactly like that. But uh, they'll stand their ground and they compete with other birds of prey, of course. Nice job. Let's give you a wing flap. Yeah. Yeah, wing flap. He's got roughly a four and a half to five foot wingspan. He's on the small side. He was calf attached and he doesn't really have the big pectoral or chest muscles that a wild migratory snowy owl would have to have, but he's gorgeous nonetheless. And we have hope to have him into his teens or 20s or maybe beyond. I'm, you and I are going to do it, and then I'm going to see if he can do it. Okay, so he just, he says, who? He goes, who? 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 Okay, hang on a minute, and let's just see. Let's be quiet as mice. And sometimes when I put out his five foot wings, oh, he's hooting. Boo. Here we go. Boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if he'll do it again. Notice that big ghouler pouch, the hooting pouch, I call it, going 